after Donald Trump gave that disastrous speech last night where he attacked Medal of Honor recipients, Donald Trump's morning is not going well. He is repeatedly emailing his followers with scams, with weird love bombing messages. Let me just show you what he's been writing this morning. So he sent two emails right away, one at 6.03 a.m., the other one at 6.41 a.m. The 6.03 a.m. email says, I am Donald Trump. Ben, you inspired me to make this. And the 6.41 a.m. email says, Ben, what time should we pick you up? Trump Force 2 awaits. So when you click the email that says, Ben, you inspired me to make this, here's what pops up. Fight, fight, fight. It is just a random all black shirt with like Trump's fist um, on it. And it says, once my clenched fist went up on that fateful evening in Pennsylvania, the message was clear. Fear not, I will never surrender. I will walk through fire for you. I will put my freedom on the line for you. I'll even take a bullet for you. And I'm just getting started. Ben, I would do anything for you and anything's in caps. But I just need you to do this one thing for me. Before the day is over, claim your special edition t-shirt and let the world know that you stand with Trump. Fight, fight, fight. In the email repeatedly says, fight, fight, fight. Look at that ugly shirt right there. Then he says, I will walk through fire for you. I will put my freedom on the line for you. You won't even leave Bedminster to campaign at this point. You're holding press conferences, which the corporate media gladly aids and abets this ridiculousness where you stand there and you whine about how Vice President Kamala Harris was on the front cover of Time magazine and it bothers you that it was a drawing of her and you complain and whine about being caught called weird, and then you just go on and rant and rave like a lunatic for hours on end, walk through fire. Are you kidding me? Then Donald Trump writes, Ben, what time should we pick you up? And so it's obviously personalized to anybody who's on his list, sir. Then it goes, final boarding call for Trump Force 2. J.D. Vance is going to be there, Ben. Will you be joining him on this free trip? Do you want to fly on Trump Force 2? Confirm the flight reservations. I mean, what a scam. So they're saying that there is a free flight on Air Force Two right now. All I have to do is confirm my flight reservations. It goes on to say, though, when I told JD he could invite anyone he wanted on this all expenses paid getaway, he immediately mentioned your name. He even told me he wants to shake your hand and take a picture together. All you have to do, though, is chip in on midnight and I'll automatically enter you in a chance for this free ride. So you click the reservation button and then it says, if you just chip in, you can have a chance to fly on Air Force Two. I mean, seriously, who believes these things? I mean, and these are the emails he sends over and over again, as I mentioned, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. He sent two those two emails. Let me show you just to remind you what Donald Trump said last night. He was talking to Miriam Adelson at Bedminster. She's one of his biggest donors. She donated $150 million to Donald Trump and requested a quid pro quo in return that Donald Trump basically not support a two-state solution in the Middle East in, re in response to getting this $150 million dollars. Her husband was Sheldon Adelson, who owned casinos in uh, Las Vegas and across the world. And so Donald Trump said that he gave her uh, the Medal of Freedom, which he says is better um, than getting a Congressional Medal of Honor. Congressional Medal of Honors are awarded to people in our military and veterans who have displayed the kind of highest form of courage. It's often given posthumously to members of the military. But Donald Trump said that she got the Medal of Freedom, which is better because she said, he said that she still looks good and lots of the military people, they don't look good or they're dead or they look really bad. And so she should be prouder of the medal she received. Play this clip. I have to say, Miriam, uh, I watched Sheldon sitting so proud in the White House when we gave Miriam the presidential Medal of Freedom, that's the highest award you can get as a civilian. It's the equivalent of the Congressional Medal of Honor, 
but civilian version. It's actually much better because everyone gets the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's soldiers. They're either in very bad shape because they've been hit so many times by bullets or they're dead. She gets it and she's a healthy, beautiful woman. It's very <laughs> and they're rated equal. Yeah, that's what Donald Trump was saying last night. Also, he was attacking uh, Senator Chuck Schumer by saying Chuck Schumer is a Palestinian. And that's how that's the line of attack he used to say, Schumer, you're like a Palestinian now. Here, play this clip. If you said, let's say 15 years ago, maybe not even that long, anything bad about Israel or Jewish people, you were finished as a politician, right? You were finished. You wouldn't do that, <laughs> Congressman. You wouldn't do. You wouldn't do it anyway. But nobody would do it. The p most powerful lobby in in this country, by far, was Israel and Jewish people. Today, it's almost like what happened. What happened? What happened to Schumer? What happened to all these people? Schumer's like a, a Palestinian, right? It's a Palestinian. You got to remember that. Though. But let's face it. This is who MAGA has become. Like. Here's what Nancy Mace, MAGA Republican Congresswoman uh, from South Carolina, you know, posted this morning as well. She goes, much needed caffeine after taking on the radical left last night on CNN. And as Aaron Ruper said, pronouncing someone's name intentionally wrong is not taking on the left. All these people are WWE cosplay performers. That's all this MAGA thing is. It's it's performance. It's cosplay performance theater. Nancy Mace went on CNN last night. It was just this ridiculous panel, too, of like six people and everyone's yelling at everybody. And you're not... You just watch it and you get angry because like no one's giving you data and facts and explaining things, just people yelling at each other. It's why we do the format differently here at the Midas Touch Network. But here's Nancy Mace in her words, taking on the radical left by saying that uh, she's not going to ever pronounce Vice President Kamala Harris's name correctly. Here, play this clip. And Kamala's, Kamala's, uh, oh, Kamala. you had it right. You, you say, almost got it. I will it. say Kamala's name it. any way that I want to. No, but, Kamala's, but you mispronounced her and you did. also misjudged her. You're purposely mispronouncing her name. That's how we're going to to acknowledge her name. If, if, I, if, I time, if I purposely Kamala's, mispronounced your name, Kamala's that would not be appropriate. Policies are Joe Biden. Oh, and all these very radical plans that are being announced by Vice President Kamala Harris, like her plan today to, uh, this was the announcement that was released today. Vice President Harris lays out agenda to lower the costs for, fa for American families. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris is announcing several proposals for her first 100 days in office to bring down costs for American families. The steps announced today will cut taxes for the middle class, reduce grocery costs, take on price gouging, lower the cost of owning and renting homes, continue to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, and relieve medical debt for millions of Americans. These bold actions will address some of the sharpest pain points American families are confronting and bolster their financial security. And then she details, not, you know, like, saying, oh, I'm going to make us great again. I'm going to make us... She goes through and she details what the plans are in a very detailed um, uh, press release that provides specifics, that actually lays out the plan, calling for the construction of 3 million new housing units to end the housing supply shortage in the next four years. Think about it. There's already been, under the Biden-Harris administration, 40 to 50,000 infrastructure projects that have gone up across the country. First ever tax incentive for building starter homes, a historic expansion of existing tax incentives for businesses that build rental housing that is affordable, a new federal fund to spur innovative housing construction, cutting red tape and needless bureaucracy, lowering the rent for hardworking Americans by taking on corporate and major landlords, Stopping Wall Street investors from buying up and marking up homes in bulk. Stop rent-setting data firms from price-fixing to raise rents by double digits. Lowering the cost of prescription drugs and relieving medical debt. Capping the cost of insulin at $35 and out-of-pocket expenses for prescription drugs at $2,000 for everyone. Accelerating the speed of Medicare negotiations over prescription drugs. 
increasing competition and demand transparency in the healthcare industry, starting by cracking down on ph pharmaceutical companies who block competition and abusive practices by pharmaceutical middlemen who squeeze false, uh, small pharmacy profits and raise the cost on consumers. Vice President Harris and Governor Walz will also work with states to cancel medical debt for millions of Americans, lowering grocery costs, advancing the first ever federal ban on price gouging on food and groceries, setting clear rules of the road to make clear that big corporations can't unfairly exploit consumers, secure new authority for the FTC and state attorney general to investigate and impose strict new penalties, cutting taxes for the middle class with up to a $6,000 tax credit per child. Yes, the exact same tax credit that Republicans all voted against and J.D. Vance refused to show up to that vote in the past week or two. Vice President Kamala saying, let's raise it actually to a $6,000 tax credit per child, cutting taxes for middle class families with kids. Sorry, I'm going into all this detail. I just think it's helpful to know, you know, some of these details. Cut taxes to help Americans afford health insurance on the Affordable Care Act marketplace, saving an average of $700 on their health insurance, cutting taxes for frontline workers. I can go on and on. You know, so what's the MAGA response to that today? Where, where's MAGA going with this? Exactly where you think they would go with this. Stephen Miller and MAGA and Fox. They want to scare you. They want to take away your joy. They want to cause fear and they want to block this plan that would help Americans. So here's the Harris housing plan. She's going to import 15 million illegal aliens. She's going to give them all subsidies. She's going to give the illegals public housing. This is what they do. This is what they do to divide and conquer we the people and try to destroy uh, in America where people can actually get good things that they deserve by causing fear and panic to help people like Miriam Edelson, who's there, who Donald Trump then gives the Medal of Freedom to and says that that's the ultimate gift, giving Donald Trump all this money is the, in, in her getting the Medal of Freedom. That's better than our courageous veterans. It is absolutely despicable, and we're calling it out here on the Midas Touch Network. Let me just show you this, because you may say, hey, Ben, you show me those emails all the time. Wh who's the audience for this? Like, what is what is it like to be a kind of MAGA supporter right now? Well, let, let me show you this. This is real. This is like a, a real person, and this is what MAGA TikTok looks like, just so you know. I'm not going to show you more. I could show you thousands of videos like this, but this is what MAGA TikTok is, where they each show each other their Donald Trump paintings and their portraits and how they can raise their children with full and, other, full and utter obedience and devotion to Donald Trump. Just buckle up. This is a little bit scary. Play this clip. I'm a conservative mom. Of course I let my kids watch Trump on replay all day long. I'm a conservative mom. Of course Alexa knows who my daddy is. Alexa, who's my daddy? Your daddy is Donald J. Trump. I'm a conservative mom. Of course we have a commissioned art piece of Trump hanging in our house. I'm a conservative mom. Of course my kids refer to Trump as daddy. Hey mom. When is Daddy Trump's next rally? I'm a conservative mom. Of course my kids sit around talking about Trump all day. Did y'all hear where Kamala Harris was trying to sell Daddy Trump's policies? Yes. Kamala Harris! That is what the brainwashing to these MAGAs have done. This is what it's become. Here, by the way, is Scott Pressler. This is um, who is now kind of leading the effort to reach out to people like that. And, um, you know, and, and get them out to vote. So this is the MAGA voter, this leading the MAGA voter registration drive. This is Scott Pressler, who's considered in like the Trump MAGA world. This guy's MAGA royalty. Play this clip. Buddy, this is Scott Pressler. I just finished interviewing with Dr. Sebastian Gorka on Newsmax. And earlier today, I had the opportunity to go on the radio with Dan Bongino. I know. And earlier this week, I also went on with Jesse Kelly and Dom Giordano weekly has me on his program. Should be noted as well that there were uh, financial disclosures. I'll do another take on this as well. 
um, d- updated financial disclosures had to be submitted by the candidates in connection with this race. Pull it up right here if we can. Here it is. These are the on the new liability section for Donald Trump. You can see, take a look at the bottom. This is the E. Jean Carroll debt, and you've got the New York Attorney General uh, civil fraud judgment as well. He owes E. Jean Carroll around $100 million if and when he loses that appeal, and New York Attorney General around $500 million there on his liabilities on the uh, FEC disclosures he has to make about uh, his assets. Look, we'll keep you posted as we learn more here in the Midas Touch Network. I'll do a whole nother take on the liabilities on Trump's uh, uh presidential disclosures running for the office of presidency disclosures that he had to made with those liabilities we'll be back soon hit subscribe we need to get to 3 million subscribers this month thanks for watching love this video make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at midastouch.com/newsletter